Two days later and not much has changed. For one, we still have USDC that's the peg. A new development is coming out that Silicon Valley's bank CEO cashed out shares before the crash or before the closure I should say. And lastly, other companies other than just crypto related companies were affected by this. So, in today's live stream, we're going to be covering all of the latest developments circling around this story. Francis Dune Uncensored! That's right, ladies and gentlemen, there are developments that are coming out that are revealing the truth behind the scene. As you just saw, CEO of Silicon Valley Bank has actually sold shares prior to this crash or this uh, shutdown, I should say. That is just sickening. That is just sick. It's like history is repeating itself all over again, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, what are we going to do here in this video is first, I want to show you guys these little developments. Right. And then after that, I want to really, you know, hone in on you know, something more positive, right? Like, how about, how could we make money, right? There's always an opportunity when there is a disaster. So, um, let's get right to it, guys. As you can see right here, USDC is at 95 cents, okay? Um, I think a lot of people were speculating that USDC was going to recover within about 24 hours. Some of them are saying maybe even tomorrow. Well, I, I beg to differ. I actually think that how it might be a little bit of both here in terms of like what to expect tomorrow. Yes, it might recover. Maybe it wouldn't. Maybe things will get worse, right? I believe that how Coinbase is not allowing people to convert USDC anymore, obviously, because it's the peg. It's not worth its value. I get that. But um, I think the worst is not yet here and you know tomorrow we're going to probably have more negative news this is just going to snowball to be something worse and worse and worse and i'm not talking about usdc i'm talking about silvergate i'm talking about um you know the silicon valley bank all of the news that they got to come and tell us to update us on what really went down and investigators are getting into this you know we have that helen lady the little witch looking woman the sec lady who controls all this stuff she's saying that how this is not a bailout situation and the reason why i think that is not um really too fair and you know it's not about being fair but it's because i don't know if they're trying to do this deliberately to prove points like they normally do but usually when we see banks go out like this they more times out of 10 do get bailed out so i really don't know what is the reason behind all of that um i think we're gonna have to see how that develops but you know that man they have narratives of their own they got a story of their own so um you know it's almost like if the outcome is already determined Right? And this is just like the movie that we're watching, but they already know how this movie ends. Anyhow, so let's carry on right now. We're going to move on to this piece of news here. Silicon Valley Bank CEO cashed out shares and paid bonuses just before collapse. Okay? The briefing says Silicon Valley Bank top executive sold over $4 million, ladies and gentlemen, of company shares a few weeks before its collapse. Now, 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 what is that? What does that really mean? Well, I think that's called insider trading, right? That's called insider trading. Anyhow, the bank also paid employees bonuses a few hours before it collapsed. Well, hey, at least one could see that how they were looking out for their employees, but not so much their customers. Okay, some stakeholders urge the governments to, um, to bail out the failed bank, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Let's carry on. So according to media reports, Silicon Valley Bank, SVB, that's short for Silicon Va Valley Bank, if you see um, the article referencing to that, paid annual bonuses to all eligible employees when its CEO cashed out stock options before its collapse. SVB CEO Greg Becker sold $2.27 million worth of the bank stocks on February 27th, according to an SEC filing. The sale were part of a 10B51 program that Becker filed on January 26th. Another SEC filing showed that Becker had sold 1.1 million in stocks in January as well. Okay, so they clearly knew what was going to happen um, all the way back in January. Okay, we're in March right now. Okay, and they actually sold before that as well. So I believe there was two occasions where they went to the um, to the market and they just chopped that off chop that off to, you know, the next person who thought that how, you know, this was going to have a bright future, them bags. They told him to hold these bags because guess what? We're going to shut this bank down and we don't want none of it. Okay. Um, another SEC filing showed that. So the filings, the CEO mostly sold the stocks between the $285 and $302. What is that stock right now? <laughs> Could somebody tell me? I should have that myself. Or maybe the article tells us. Let's see. Meanwhile, a CNBC report said the top executives at the embattled bank, um, including the CFO, sold shares worth $4.5 million before its collapse. Okay? And this is the name of the game, guys. Like, I keep on telling you this. 
You think that how laws are like made to protect you? No, it's not. It's made to protect corporations, institutions, and politicians. The ones who pretty much, um, you know, create those laws. And, you know, who are their friends? Well, their friends are these people here. So when you'll always see, the, you know, a, a situation like this where they get bailed out after it's clearly corruption, insider trading, and mismanage of funds or misuse of funds. But uh, at the end of the day, hey, you know, you take care of me, I take care of you. That's what it's all about here. And this is why we're always going to see these things um, keep on happening. You know, like with FTX, Sam Bankman-Fried, or what do they call him? What's his nickname now? Uh, Sam freaking, um, what? Sam Bankrupt Freed or whatever the hell it is. But um, you think he's going to get any major um, consequences? Any major sort of like end result where he's going to see an extended period of jail and time in jail? I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, we all know his family was connected with politicians and they funded Democrats and what have you. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, I don't think that's going to happen. We do have people in the live stream. Thank you so much for joining and do share this. Um, this is, you know, newsworthy. You guys know me. I don't really like to cover news as much, but this does have a lot to do with our investments here and people who are holding the USDC. All right. So let's get on to it to the next one right here. And this is an interesting one. Okay, let's scroll all the way back up. So a lot of people are under the impression that how this only has to do with crypto-related companies. No, well, you know, ideally, um, Circle of USDC. Well, essentially, Circle USDC, yes, they did have 25% in here, but as you can see from these headlines, that's not, uh, they're not the only people that, um, you know, was using this bank to um, hold their funds. So we have Roku, we have Circle, obviously, Roblox, which is the biggest metaverse right now. Um, and that's something, you know, I'm a big part of that whole, like, little niche over there. We're building experiences on Sandbox, so this is definitely worthy for us to understand. Um, and more held major funds in Silicon Valley Bank when it crashed. Okay, so Roku, a hardware digital media company known for its streaming services. How many of you guys got Roku right now? How many, how many of you guys in the States got Roku? I don't got Roku, but... Um, I'm in Canada. It's not really that prominent over here, but I do know a lot of people that are, you know, customers of them. So anyhow, Roku, a hardware digital media company known for its streaming services, held about 26% of its cash at Silicon Valley Bank financially, um, sorry, financially, uh, financial, sorry. According to the securities filing, as other companies have disclosed ties to the firm after it was closed by regulators Friday, okay, goes on to say, Roku held an estimated of $487 million, guys, at SVB. Rep um, representing approximately 26% of the company's cash. So when we look at that, that's actually very similar to, sorry, that's very similar to the same amount of um, percent that Circle had. So one could guess that how this was a very trusted bank and to have 26% of your reserves in one particular bank, bro, to me, that's a large sum. Like what I personally do, you know, as a crypto fanatic, when I have my different portfolios and such, bro, I got about 25 different devices. You know what I'm saying? And that's for like being hacked and such. I guess us um, being, you know, in this space could look at our hardware device and being hacked as going bankrupt, as if the bank was to go bankrupt, right? Because a decentralized, you know, um, you know, like like a ledger or something like that, or a safe pal wallet where you control the keys, it's not really operated by anybody other than yourself in terms of holding the keys and having access to it. And the only way that goes down is if it gets hacked, you know, if somebody hacks it for the most part, unless you get to some shady company that um, do, in fact, has the private keys. But more times, you know, that's not the case here if you're choosing the right ones. So, you know, for me, what I personally do is I actually, yeah, I have about 25 different devices and my portfolio is spread across all of those. So if I got Bitcoin Cold Stars, that's in one different device only. Um, you know, this computer that I'm using right now, yeah, I got some funds here on this computer, but it's not something that's major. Why? Because when I'm actually doing my research and I'm looking into things and I want to like find out the next gem, well, you're going to have to go to some shady chats. You might have to go to some shady uh, discords, right? And then, um, who knows, you might get caught up and slip and click a link that is not legitimate and then you're in trouble and then they, you know, pretty much get access to your funds. But that's my funds that I know that that might be at the most risk and it's okay because it's only like maybe 2% my entire portfolio it's never okay but you guys know what i'm trying to say right so um, that's how i would look at this but having 26 percent in here bro um they had a lot of belief in this bank that's what that tells me okay so let's go on so crypto obviously circle crypto firm circle revealed in a tweet late friday it held 3.3 billion with the bank adding the remainder of its 40 billion in cash those held elsewhere which we're going to get to we're going to get to where that elsewhere is because um, how many of you knew what Silicon Valley Bank was 
before this news broke? Probably not a lot of you, right? Probably not a lot of you, right? So we're going to look at the other banks on, on where Circle is keeping their funds, which is very important. <laughs> like, are you going to be using Circle again? I, if this recovers, which it looks like it might, as we said on, on our first stream when this broke midnight, um, I don't know about you, but hell no, not me. But we're going to definitely look at the other banks that they are involved with. Okay, so Roblox, the biggest metaverse right now. Okay, I'm, a lot of kids play this. Um, my daughter, she's only like now about to turn uh, five and she's talking about Roblox already. So a lot of the new generation is all about Roblox. Corporation had, uh, sorry, held 5% of its $3 billion in cash or $150 million um, at the bank, according to filing Though the video game company said SVB's collapse will have no impact on its day-to-day -day operations. Um, I know Roblox do have their own currency, so maybe that's helping them. I don't know that they hold a digital currency, okay? So, they got another one here, Rocket Lab USA, an aerospace manufacturing company said in, its, in a filing it held 7.9% or $38 million dollars of its total cash at SVB, ladies and gentlemen. And the list does go down. Uh, Jupiter Networks, Lending Club, so on and so on. So once again, this is not something that's affecting us in this space. Um, you know, unfortunately, the traditional economy as well is going to have an impact, and that will also have an impact here. You know, when COVID came about, you know, one could argue that how it actually benefited our industry, that being, you know, the crypto industry, which it did immensely. But, you know, people say, well, COVID was somewhat, was somewhat of an economic downfall, which it was. But the problem, the difference is not really the problem. The difference between, say, something like this and that, why you can't really expect the same amount of benefits for our industry. Not to say we wouldn't benefit, um, but you had a lot of people at home, Right vast majority of the uh, world's population was sitting at home out of work or they got laid off, right? Or they're working from home and they're looking, they had other means of how to, you know, look for, um, you know, how to make a dollar from home. And then they turn on YouTube and they saw guys like myself and guys like, you know, all these other, you know, Bitcoin guys talking about it and the NFTs blew up and we, we know how that story um, went. So I think this particular case might be a little bit different, but let's see what happens from, from you know, you know, what unfolds. All right, who do we got in the chat? Let me see what's up. We do have X Killer. Yo, what up, Roy? Thank you for joining. We do have APV. He says, yo, yo. We do have Nick. He says, what's up, y'all? What's up, Nick? Um, sexy Dutchman, how are you guys doing? If you guys got any questions, you could drop them as well. We'll definitely, um, you know, answer some of your questions as well. And don't, for, don't forget, at the end, like near the end of the stream, we're going to actually be talking about how to make some money. Right, that's what I uh, know best. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like all this new stuff is great and all, you know, like to get informed. But at the end of the day, guys, like, and I gotta be honest. I gotta be honest. At the end of the day, we could talk about the news because you gotta be aware of what's going on. But I feel as though, like, when people want to talk about this stuff, it's it's almost like to to vent a little bit. It's to you know to get some rage out and to make them see themselves feel a little bit better. You know, momentarily, maybe we might hold some Twitter spaces and some popular figures might be there, like Grand, Grand Cardone. Like, there was a, a Twitter space that was happening yesterday for, like, hours and hours, and that's cool and all. But you're not going to get none out of that, really, other than, yeah, man, tapping each other on the back and shit. You know, these results are already in. The decision's already made. You can say what you want. You can whine what you want. You can raise your hand in town halls and do all that shit. But at the end of the day, your opinion don't matter, unfortunately. It matters to, like, yeah, your peers... But do you think they really give a fuck on what you got to say? And do you think that your opinion is actually going to fucking change anything? No, bro. So for me, I always try to look for opportunities, right? And again, there's always opportunities when there's a disaster, straight up. So what do I rather do? Do I rather spend some of my, some of my time in a Twitter space or, you know, uh, on a YouTube live like this? Or having a big, like, you know, like, 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 um, what do you call it? Like a big leaderboard sort of like discussion, you know, at the round table or some of that shit. No, jerking each other off saying, yeah, you're right. That's not going to help anything. Trust me. Might be good content for people to watch, but at the end of the day, is it really building your dreams and putting money into your pockets and doing the things that you want to do? I don't think so. So I'll just leave it at that, man. And we're going to touch up on some things at the end of the stream. So we covered that. Now, this is very interesting shit right here. Okay, so Circle's exposure to U.S. banks could top nine billion. Now, what what is this about? This this article right here is essentially about the other banks that Circle is storing their funds in. Okay, so let's get right to it. 
Circle's reserves are held in a number of banks in the United States, including Silvergate, Silicon Valley Bank, and Bank of New York Mellon. Now, let's be honest right now. How many of you people who are watching this live stream, or maybe you're watching the replay, do smash like, by the way, and let's not forget about that, but how many of you guys um, actually heard of Silvergate prior to this uh, shutdown of Silvergate and also Silicon Valley Bank? How many of you heard of them before? Raise your hand. Although I can't see it, but raise your hand. <laughs> Let me know in the live chat and also comment. Probably not much, right? Not much of you guys. Well, one could only say maybe these other banks that they have their funds stored, they might, you know, they might be getting popular for all the wrong reasons, if you know what I'm saying. Um, you know, another bankruptcy. So let's see the names of these banks. USD coin issue of circles exposure to the United States banking system sits near nine billion. According to its latest audit report from January, Circle's reserves are held in a number of regulated financial institutions um, in the country. Sorry, in the country, including Silvergate, Silicon Valley Bank, and Bank of New York Mellon. According to the report, the amount held in cash by U.S. regulated financial institutions was 8.6 billion on January 31st, representing roughly 20% of its reserves. Another 33.6 billion of its reserves are held in U.S. Treasuries managed by good old BlackRock. Um, through the Circle Rever uh, Reserve Fund, registered as a government money market fund, and funds, sorry, and with funds held by BNY Mellon. Okay, in a statement to Coin Telegraph, a spokesperson of for Circle explained, "Here we go. Silicon Valley Bank is one of six banking partners Circle uses for managing the approximately 25% portion of USDC reserves held in cash." While we await clarity on how the FDIC receivership of Silicon Valley Bank will impact its depositors, Circle and USDC continue to operate normally, okay? And I believe they come down right here. Where is those list of banks? Okay, right here. Other banks, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. Pay attention to this. You might want to do your own research when it comes to these specific banks. As I said, these banks that I'm about to, you know, reveal to you are, is where USDC holds their cash. And this is important if you are a USDC holder or still want to be after this point, which I don't understand why you don't want to be, but let's check it out. So, other banks holding, holding the company's reserve includes Citizens Trust Bank, number one, okay, Customers Bank, number two, New York Community Bank, number three, a division of Flagstar Bank, number four, and Signature Bank. USDC is the second largest stable coin with a 42 billion circle in supply as of January 31st, blah, 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 blah. So there you have it, guys. Citizens Trust Bank, Customers Bank, New York Community Bank, a division of Flagstar Bank, um, Signature Bank. Okay, you might want to do your homework on them. You might want to see if they're operating okay. Although, you know, the difference between our industry and them is you can't really check on-chain data. You can't check on-chain data. And that's exactly what could solve all of this BS. If all of these banks had their accounting and all of their transactions and everything on chain, do you think they'll be going down as frequently as this? Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. There are instances where, you know, some firms will actually legitimately mismanage funds. Legitimately mismanage funds in an honest way, meaning that how they honestly fucked up. But when you don't see what happened behind the scenes right and it's not on chain and transparent like that they could get away with murder because now you're just gonna have to trust them and this is why we're seeing a lot more of these firms actually say well you know what how could they prove it you know the, you know we know this politician we know that politician let's just go and mess up and cash out sell some stocks and everything will be okay we'll get away with it because nobody sees our transactions but that's the beautiful thing about blockchain technology and that's exactly what these banks need to incorporate but would that ever happen no why why because politicians don't want to see that get away, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's part of the game, man. That's the dirty world we freaking live in. Um, and blockchain will never get freaking adopted. You guys want to talk about mass adoption come to crypto? Well, how about they adopt blockchain, for fuck's sakes? That would solve all of this. That would eradicate all the freaking dirty plays we're seeing right now in this space, man. Right? So, in, well, in the, in the traditional banking world, at least. Let me head back on to the live stream. So we got, uh, sorry, to the live chat rather. Poofcop says, sub homies, what's up Poofcop? Thank you for joining. And we're getting to the, my favorite part and that's how to actually bank some damn freaking coin. Okay. Um, top dog, what's up top dog, AKA top G. 
Ne- never heard of them before, exactly, right? But everybody wants to talk about them now. Why? Because of this. So those other banks, just be careful. They might be out on uh, headline news for all the wrong reasons. So USDC is a classic, is classic a good ex- alternative to what? I, I don't understand what you're saying there. Um, so Derek, hey, what's up, Derek? Thank you for joining. USDC has 77% of the funds in treasury bills. So even if the worst case and they lose their 23% cash reserves, which seems very unlikely, in the worst case, it would drop. <laughs> but Derek, Derek, no, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that comment a lot, actually. Um, that's interesting stuff there. And thank you for those facts. Um, but if the worst case scenario, like, dude, for me, even if um, a, a stable coin like USDC were to drop to, you know, you know, 98 cents, that's not good. That's not good. That, that's not reliable, right? So let's just say, Derek, that how you are a business owner, you have a money transfer license, you're facilitating funds for clients, and you know all of a sudden one dollar becomes 90, 98 cents. And let's just say you have hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars. That it will have a huge impact on you. So um, to say now the worst, well, you know, was it seventy seven cents? I'm, and I don't know if this is what you meant by that. I mean that how it's not that bad if it was a seventy seven cents. Just because it doesn't go to zero doesn't mean that how, you know what I mean? That, you know, it, it, like it's not bad. Just because it didn't go to zero. If it's at 77 cents, to me, that's horrible. You know, 98 cents is unacceptable if it was to stay there or whatever, right? Now, I, I don't think it's going to stay there. They're probably going to eventually recover. We'll see how that, what happens there. But at the end of the day, this shows the uh, the holes in their, you know, in their system. So it's not something that I see myself using at all. And I don't recommend you guys use this, man. Either who cares if they recover, this could happen again. That's the point, okay. But thank you so much for that information, Derek. Okay, so now let's get to the real shit the shit that I'm best at, and that's how can we take advantage of opportunities like this? Well, it's not necessarily like this, I would just say that how this was something that was happening already. And guys, pay attention because you know, when, you know, when the results are in, when, um, you know, this actually comes and materialize later down the road, you're going to be like, that mofo was on it again. You know, I took a little break, but you know me, just because I'm not on camera doesn't mean I'm not behind the scenes researching, doing my thing. Now let's check on my Hyro wallet. Anybody knows what a Hyro wallet is? Let me know in the live chat. Okay. I'm going to go like this. And, um, right here i hope it's open still there we go so this is my hyro wallet okay this is a wallet uh that uh you could access certain things um you know this is for the stacks blockchain as well and i will be covering much more um content on what stacks is okay but we're actually going to be looking at a number of different things right you're probably seeing uh <laughs> this is some next shit that i found out last night but uh, that's for another video so i just want to show you guys something right here okay and this is not my uh this is not uh, what i wanted to really show you but since it's here let's just take a look at it so guys, do you know what this is right here? So I made a tweet, okay? I made a tweet that said, get the heck out of the of this stable coin if you're in it, which is USDC. They will eventually fall and F up the entire market sooner or later. I'm going to inscribe, for those of you who don't know, don't know what inscribe is, I'll explain that. I'm going to inscribe this tweet on Bitcoin now just because I'm classy like that and watch it age like Halle Berry. And I was referring to this thread over here, okay? So like other customers and depositors who relied on SVB, I found out that how they actually, um, you know, had funds in there at the time. And this was before the DPEG. This was before it actually started to DPEG. Now, if you look at the timestamp of my inscription or my ordinal, which is on the Bitcoin network, which is not a new token, which is an actual Satoshi that is part of the supply of the 21 million Bitcoins. I believe there's 100 million Satoshis in one Bitcoin times that by 21. There you go. This is one Satoshi out of that. Okay, the timestamp right here is actually at, um, where is it, uh, 3.59 UTC PM, uh, sorry, AM, which is actually 11 PM, give or take, or 10.59 PM Eastern Standard Time. Now, when this actually broke, and uh, let me go back there actually, when this actually started to peg, it was seven minutes after that, um, that, that, that timestamp. Um, guys, I, I knew it was going to age freaking good, like Halle Berry, because, you know, she never gets old, it doesn't seem. But I didn't know it was going to age that fast, you know, to that regard. So this is something that I inscribed just to have it for proof of what I said. And sure enough, here it is. It's the first freaking ordinal to talk about it, to say get out of it and be careful of it. And, you know, it's on the freaking, you know, on the Bitcoin network. Now, this might auction for some money. I don't freaking know, but I'm not, it's not about that. It's almost like a trophy that I just keep it framed, and it's just there. And that's not what I wanted to show you. But what I did want to show you guys, and, and you know, it just crossed my, uh, 
my browser as I, was, as I was scrolling. What I do want to show you guys is this. Okay, so this is one of my many wallets. I got about 14 freaking wall, um, different accounts in this one thing here. Look at these things here, guys. We're going to start with the simple ones, guys. Look, I know most of y'all don't get it. I know I get it, but don't worry. That's why I'm here. Oh, shit, you can't see. That's why I'm here. So let's start from the top again. Okay, so this is my Hyrule wallet, also known as a Taproot supported wallet. For those of you that don't know what Taproot is, Taproot essentially um, is an upgrade for Bitcoin that makes everything faster and even more, um, um, you know, more secure in terms of privacy. Okay, and it also could support these types of um, assets, which is ordinals. Okay, ordinals right now they are looking like yes, the JPEGs or Bitcoin NFTs, but there's also text ordinals. There's also like .dot sats domains. So for somebody who wants to have like a domain on actual Bitcoin. You know, you might see .btc out there, but that's on the stacked blockchain. But there's .sats as well, which is um on actual Bitcoin itself, not stacks. And stacks is on top of Bitcoin, right? So clearly, I've been shopping some Bitcoin ordinals, right? As you can see right here. Now, what's very important about this is the actual inscription number. So let's go to this guy right here. Um, where is he? Right here. I just passed him, where is he? It was the yellow picture. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's right here, this guy, okay? So this particular ordinal, tell me what do you see right off of the bat, anybody who's watching this right now. Let me know in the live chat. What did you see off of this? The inscription number is under 10,000. That's highly important. A lot of people say under 100K, and I agree. 100, under 100K will be valuable as well. But the lower the inscription number, the better for you. Okay, that's where the value is going to be. Okay, so right now, um, so this was actually done on the 23rd of uh, February 7th. Okay, they inscribed this and it's just a picture. So the difference between these Bitcoin ordinals and the actual NFTs on Ethereum is it's not a new minted token or a 7221 token, whatever the, the number is, ERC7221 or whatever, right? It's an actual part of Bitcoin. It's a Satoshi. And the earlier the um, ordinal, the more valuable it is. So if we go to ordinals.com, okay, we're going to look at where the actual um, latest ordinals number, uh, inscription number is. Where is that? I believe it's here. What am I doing? We're roughly about, I would say we're over 400K. Where is the latest block? Sorry. And this is the um, Ordinals Explorer. So you guys can come over here too and check out some stuff. Latest inscriptions, I think right here. Yeah. So 441,444. And that number is not stopping, guys. Okay. So I have an inscription and, and I got a lower one as well, right? Than 441,000. When this thing reaches to 1 million inscriptions, when this thing reaches to 1.5 million inscriptions, when this thing reaches to say 2 million, 5 million inscriptions, what do you think the price of that's going to be? It's going to become something that's historical artifact value here. Not so much what's the use case of it, right? When you look at real artifacts in the world, like in the museum, what gives it value? What's the use case of it? No, that, that's not what that is, right? This was the year of Bitcoin ordinal inscriptions. And mind you, as I alluded to, it's evolving, right? We're seeing things like, like, like BRC20 tokens coming out, like, and it's not tokens though, it's Satoshis, right? And that, like, I'm not going to really make this video about that, but it's to show you the potential that we have here, Okay. The dot sats domains, bro. I got fucking Michael Saylor's dot sats domain. If that thing actually goes live and it's successful, which it looks like it's going to be, you know, in a few months, you know who else I got, bro? I got that freaking El Salvador president's dot sats domain, bro. You know who else I got, bro? I got Bitcoin maximalist dot sats domains, bro. You know what I'm saying? So this is what I've been doing when all of this fud has been happening. You know, I've been sats hunting, bro. And I know a lot of you guys don't get this just yet. You're like, well, bro, that's fine and all, but um, how are you going to sell? There's people buying it right now, but it's not something that's going to have to age. You're going to have to keep it. It's just like a historical piece of um, artifact, right? That's going to be valuable in the future. And again, as I said, the lower the inscription, the better, right? And that's what we're talking about over here. So let me give you another example of one here. And look at this, you know, the, listen, it's all about low inscriptions. And by the day, we're seeing more and more people get onto this. More and more people are buying Bitcoin, and that's great for the network, and that's great for the price, right? Miners are making money. Bitcoin's price is gradually going to be going up, right? Um, 
right? Because price crash is going to be going up. So, you know, win-win situation over there. Ordinal's market is getting some love, win-win situation over there. And then the inscription number goes up with it. So what does that mean? If you have an inscription number today that's below 100K, you're laughing when this thing gets to 5 million because at 100K right now, it's still good, it's still nice, but when it's over 5 million, guess what, bro? Do you think it's going to be the same price what it is today? Of course not. Of course not. Okay? So if you're not educated on what Bitcoin Ordinals is, you are missing out on some mega opportunities. Okay? So let's, let me show you another one here. And this is uh, the crypto lifestyle.btc. Um, I'll show you some of the SATS domains too, since I mentioned it. Oh, bro, this is a gem of a gem of a gem of a gem. Uh, but this is the still image. I'm talking about this right here, and I'm going to make a separate video on why, okay? Again, if I just told you that it's all about the historical artifact about it and the low inscription number, well, let's look at the different types, right? As I said, there's JPEGs, there's um, um, texts, there are domains now, .sats, and now we're seeing freaking like um, BRC20, I forgot to mention, videos, Right? You don't really see that on Ethereum, like video NFT, and I'll tell you why that's important. The video ones are important because it's only 0.01% of ordinals are videos, or 0.1%, whatever it is. Extremely low amount. And the video ordinals are going to have a lot of value. And there's a project out there, which is right here. You guys could go do your homework. Um, they're on my Twitter. I'm going to cover them. It's worth It's worth covering. The entry price was ridiculous. It was like 0 0.017 Bitcoin or something like that. Like whatever, 250 bucks. And you're getting a freaking damn um, video ordinal at 54,000 roughly, okay? That is only part of 0.1% or 0.01% of the ordinals that's already freaking minted, guys. That's mega value, okay? So if you just look at the loan description at 54K, that already is great. If you look at the type of what it is, it's a freaking video, MP4 file, that's super rare. You combine those two things together, when inscriptions right here, this number gets to over 2 million, it's going to be worth money. More than what it is today, that's for sure, Okay. Um, I'll give you guys one last example. So this guy right here, well, I'll give you two examples. This guy here is 15,386. That's a good number. And I think I got him for like 0, .0 freaking like two or something. Give me that shit. You know, like, 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 give me like, like, get over here. Like Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Like who, who did that? Scorpion? Like, shit, bro, give me that value, man. Um, and again, like to me, obviously, if you could add a community on top of that, that would be great and all. But um, but for me, I'm looking for low inscription numbers like right here, 15,386. That's what I'm looking at. Um, you know, and also most of these ordinals, they, ha they have like about 300 supply. They got like about, um, you know, 200 supply. So to have a community driven project behind it, it's going to be a little bit harder than if you have a supply like NFTs on Ethereum, that's 10,000, right? So again, I, I, don't make the mistake and try to look for this like how you're looking for an NFT on Ethereum or the, oh, what's the community what's the use case that's secondary is it important yeah but it's it's secondary right what's first is the low inscription right and then after that what type of actual ordinal was it in terms of was it a you know a rare one or one in terms of the JPEG or what have you but inscription number is key guys all right so this guy here was a steal I want to show you my baby of all babies check this out where is it? Right here. Inscription blood clot number 987. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> good luck finding one under a thousand when this thing gets to like um, um, over a million inscriptions for less than half a Bitcoin. Good freaking luck. Okay, guys, good luck. This one here I have high expectations for because of this. It's 987. So essentially, I have ordinals under 1,000. I have ordinals under, as you just uh, saw, where is it? Right here, under, oh shit, no, did I close him? You guys remember that one. This guy here, under 10,000, right? I have ordinals, as you can see right here, under 20,000. I got another one and another one. I got ordinals in the 30K range. Oh boy. I got video ordinals, that's 0.01%. Um, of the supply, right? And this one project that I mentioned to you guys pretty much owns it all and they just did it by accident because that's what they inscribed and they didn't know that how it was literally them. And like a, So pr pretty much they have 133 MP4 ordinals in the 54K range, okay? Um, and there's only, I think, three other videos after that that's somewhere like a little bit below and all over the place. 
and then they own like pretty much 130. <laughs> so, so they own the supply. And the rest of the world didn't call, call onto this as yet. This is why you subscribe to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. And I know you're like, oh, but that don't make no sense. Don't worry. I, I can show you better than I could tell you. Let me tell you that, okay? When this thing comes and materializes, you should be like, I'm all for knew what he was saying once again. And I don't give a fuck if you guys buy it or not. I'm just sharing with you guys what I did. That clearly you can see I did do it, all right? So what else have we got here in this nice little wallet of mines? Let me see if I can show you guys one more thing, I think. Yeah, I got some over at the next place. Okay, so yeah, this is Unordinals. This was a really great project, and I got to say, I kind of, like, we got this one really early. Um, I believe it was, like, 0.5 ETH or something, or point, it was a mixture, 0.4 ETH. So what they did was, you know, the, 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 the oh, shit, sorry, guys. I keep on messing up. You guys didn't even see that, did you? Yeah, man. I was talking about this right here. 9,396, right, under 10K. Um... Then I got this guy here, right, in under 20K, right? 15,000, got another one. And then obviously you guys, I hope you guys saw this. Yeah, I think you did, 987, right? So I got that under 1,000, under 10K, right? Under 10K, under 1,000, under 20,000. And I got some as well in the 30K range and such. Okay, so, yeah. Back to what I was saying over here. Yeah, so again, so the, the, this project right here, not this one here that's um, on the picture, the big one. These guys right here, okay, they got, and I'll open it up for y'all, 54,000. This is just a still image, but this project right here are responsible for 133 um, units of MP4 videos that's on the Bitcoin Ordinal. That's the Bitcoin Ordinal on Bitcoin Network, okay? And there's only three other videos that's under, I think it was under 300K. And these guys are under 100K. Boys and girls, if you understand what I'm trying to tell you, that how it's all about art, um, artifacts and historical value like a fucking museum. Remember, this is not some. You don't got to worry about smart contract hacks. There's no smart contract here. The fucking Bitcoin network is the damn smart contract, so to say. See what I'm saying? It's a Satoshi. It's not somebody minted new tokens. Oh, the team is going to mint more. It's none of that crap. It's a Satoshi. You literally, when you inscribe something, you have a Satoshi and you choose that one Satoshi and you represent it in the form of, say, something like this. Okay? So it's part of the Bitcoin supply, guys. I, I, I don't know if you guys are catching on, but yeah, that's how that works. Okay, so... Let's carry on over here. This is ordswap.io. Here's where I pretty much spend most of my nights lately um, hunting. You know, Bitcoin, uh, what's these guys? Uh, Taproot Wizards. This is one of the more highly uh, anticipated projects. Already they got one settling for about 50, well, 15 Bitcoin, not about 15 Bitcoin. And they do have a mint coming up, but that's for like some damn whales, bro. And, and like, to be honest, like, don't get me wrong, you could do that. You could go check them out. But at the same time, um, I feel as though if you're looking for real good upside, like, put it like this, guys. At some point, ordinals are going to come to the place where, like, say, when a couple of years pass by, they're going to be so valuable that you wouldn't even be able to afford them. Not every ordinal, but certain ordinals, and Taproot Wizard definitely will be one of those, right? Um, they're going to be so valuable that you wouldn't be able to afford them. Let's just say that how the price doesn't even go up. It just remains at 50 BTC. Damn, coffee's getting cold. Let's just say that how it remains at 15 BTC. Well, where's 50? Where's what? Where, where, where is Bitcoin going to be in five years, right? So you can look at it like that as well. But um, that definitely will go up in value. We saw ordinal punks were selling for like 20 Bitcoin, I think 12. You know, right now today, and as the rest of the world catches on to this the crypto space, we're going to see much more adoption and um, the value go up as well. Um, you know, other articles on media outlets are talking about this too. The way I am as well, they're just confirming what I already found in my research. Okay. Let me know if you own any ordinals, and if you don't, you could actually inscribe your own as well. I did make a video on that, okay? Um, so this is, um, so how you use orswap.io, you essentially just, where is it? You go to market, and you could search by the number. To me, that's where it's at. Okay, let, you guys want me to see if I could find one for you all right now? That's worth it? If, you, if that's what you want, I could do that. Let me see what you guys are seeing in the chat. Are you guys, like, listen, man, you want to spend your time watching negative news and, you know, talk about, like, all that bullshit and you know attract that negative energy or you want to be positive and you want to bank some coin right that's what we're talking about right here thank you thomas for sharing that derek says okay i like derek derek is cool um svb is being auctioned now <laughs> wow 
what a what freaking joke okay so do you guys want me to look for one right now in real time for y'all we could do that and i like there's no there's no script here <laughs> we'll see what we find let me know okay and I'll, I'll show you guys what to look out for mm. by the way that same project i'm talking about man that same project that i'm talking about guys um the the, the mp4 player the floor price has dramatically changed okay i pretty much scooped up like quite a bit of it um and I think Thomas did as well. <laughs> and the floor price has dramatically changed. So I think they have a mint coming out. And those um, other, uh, the, the other collections that they have are also, sorry about that, are also under um, 100K inscriptions at 0 0.06 BT, uh, point, sorry, 0 .0, 0 0.01 freaking 6 Bitcoin. Okay. 0 0.016 Bitcoin. So that's, what's that? Like 300 bucks or so? Okay, maybe a little bit more, right? So that's a big opportunity for those who want to know more about that. Okay, show us how to do it. All right, so let's check it out then. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're, we're not going to search by number only because like if you have a lot of Bitcoin and you're willing to spend it on something like this, because as you can, what did I say? The number is where it's at, meaning the inscription number, okay? And we could validate if these are legit by going to ordinals.com and it actually direct us to ordinals.com if we just simply click, where is it? You could search by inscription as well. I think if you click at the back of it, sorry guys, I got a bunch of shit open here. I think if you click on the damn picture itself, which I just did. Look, okay, I'll just show you. So that's one, three, three. I'll go like, let me go this. We'll go Ordinals Wallet. O R D I N A L S. Shit. Sorry, guys. O R D I N A L S. Wallet.com. And let's just put in one through three. I like their database because you can search by numbers here. Through three. Ah, shit. Sorry. What the fuck happened there? This is probably not working. Yeah, ordinalswallet.com. So, inscription number one through three here tells us the owner. Um, all that kind of stuff here, location, all that shit, right? You can look at the transaction and you can really do your homework on that, okay? So it is ver verifiable as well, okay? So, um, yeah, let us go back here now. Okay, so unless you got a lot of Bitcoin and you're willing to buy one of these ordinals by numbers, you could do that, but obviously not all of us have a lot of Bitcoin. You're not sitting on, say, five Bitcoins. You're not sitting on fucking 10 or whatever to come and spend on something like this, Okay, ordinals are cool. It sounds stupid because it's all, you know, the fucking text is like, just like or some random shit. Like, this guy here has been trying to sell this for, oh my God, he's gone into 1.6 Bitcoin. Like, he's so fucking dumb. He's at 133 inscription number, but he's promoting some blood bank shit. Like, nobody wants to see that crap. Although it's a low ordinal. Although it's a low ordinal number, but nobody, they're turned off by that freaking blood bank crap, man. He would have fucking made some good money for that. I seen him trying to sell it for like 4 Bitcoin, 3.5, now it's down to 1.69. Anyhow, let's move on. So since we're not looking for inscription number because they're, you know, they're, they're pretty high up there, let us go by collections, actually, is what we're going to do. And let me see if I can find you guys in real time. I'm going to go, yeah, we'll actually buy now collections, okay? So this is going to be a lot of scouring. Um, they're not ranking them by the number, right? And this is one that I have already under a thousand. So this is going to be by luck. We're going to look at the floor prices. So they're looking at uh, 0 0.42. That's a little bit too pricey for us. We're going to come down. 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 0.22. No. Okay. Let's just check these guys out. I know it's 0 0.8. I want to see why. 10,655. I think they only, yeah, they got about a hundred. Nah, we're not interested in that. That's just way too freaking high. One thing that I don't like about ordswap.io is when you um when you're searching by collection, you also have to um do it the long way. It just kind of like sets you back to the top of the page. Okay, so let's look here. So this is point zero zero five. I did check those guys out already. This right here was good. It has gone up by point zero six. The inscription number is below. Look at that. Look at that. Honestly, I'm not going to lie, at 16,000.06 is borderline, like, okay, that will go up more. Like, if you could get, listen, as I said, people are talking about getting ordinals under 100k, and you can't go wrong in terms of bang for your buck, and they're right, right? Now, if you're looking at something that's under um, 20k, when it goes over a million, it's going to be worth that much more, okay? So, at 0 0.06 may sound expensive right now, but that value would go up, okay? So, that's not too bad, and here we go again. 
Let's look for something else. I'm going to give you guys a really good example here. Just give me some time. We'll find it. Yeah, these guys aren't bad, but... Okay, so this one here too. I was actually looking at them the other day. Bit Bruise. 78,000. Okay, this is actually a good entry price. Okay, 78,000 under 100K. It's 0 0.0149. Okay, for the lowest one. And then they all go up to like 0 0.02. Okay, again, I am not interested in the rarity of each individual one, what sparkles the best, what color it is. I'm interested in what? This. And look at this. This number is actually lower than this number. 78,472. This is 78,998. And he's doing it for um, pretty much half more of the price, 0 0.02. This guy's doing it for um, 0 0.015. This is something that I will purchase, me personally. But are there better opportunities at a lower inscription number is what you got to ask yourself. So let's go back and let's see if we can find a really good one for you guys. And I think if they're still here, this one here, no. I'll tell you why. It looks cheap, but I am not interested in this. Look at that. All the way up 193,000. Anything over, anything over 100K, I'm not interested in it. I'm not interested in it. I'm interested in everything under 100K. I'm even looking for things within the, um, you know, the 10K mark even. But that's where you get a little bit more pricier, okay? So definitely that BitBrew one was good. Okay, let's come back down here. Yeah, Rare Pepes, you're going to find those at like 20 Bitcoin or some shit. Taproot Punks, 0 0.04. Like, like, it depends. What's the average guy's, you know, capital at? You know, what's his budget at? I'm thinking like something like 0 0.01. I'm trying to look for a 0 0.01 something for y'all. Okay. On ordinals, going for almost 0 0.1 Bitcoin. Okay. We got that for 0.45 ETH, give or take. Okay. And the way they did it was pretty cool too. And I got, yeah, I forgot to um, finish that story. Um, you know, the barrier to entry into this could be somewhat uh, overwhelming. And they had um, a mechanism in place where you buy this ordinal on OpenSea, it's ETH. You go to the website, you could burn it, and you get that inscription on when they actually, um, you know, put in their supply to inscribe the unordinal um, um, collection on Bitcoin, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let us see. We're looking, we're hunting, we're hunting. Mm-hmm. What about these guys? I just don't want it to reset back. Okay, this is good too. 76,000.01 is what you're paying for an inscription under 100K. This is worth it, guys. Okay, this is worth it. Very low entry price compared to what's out there. Very low inscription number compared to what's out there. And yeah, that's what we're going by. So um, item 50, is that the total number? Activity that pretty much tells you how many people are, are buying it on Ord Swap. If you guys want to check that out, we could check it out. So this was bought. This was bought. Look, 82, 82, 82, 82. And it looks like these guys might be going for the rarity of the actual um, um, collection, right? In terms of traits and not inscription number. Okay, let me see if I could find one last one for y'all. Yeah, we're in, at collections. I'm going to look for the Bitcoin ATM, I think it was called. That was a fascinating uh, project in terms of inscription number and price. Like, you might find some really good ones like I did under 20K for like 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.04, you know? And that's, uh, that's going to, you know, pay off some dividends in the future. Okay, so what do we got here? Dog Punk Bitcoin. I think that's a higher one. I'm not going to waste your time on that. Um, this is not the same project, Taproot Wizards. This is Bitcoin Wizards, okay? So don't get mistaken for that. Um, and buy it and think you own something that's more valuable than what they're selling it for. Bitcoin Monkey is not interested in that. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> this guy is selling his .sats domain over there. Let me see if I can find the actual project. So I can't, it's not there. Um, okay, so let's take a, let's take a look at this one here. I could have gone to page two, actually. Ah, 304K, bro. Are you kidding me, bro? Get lost with that garbage. Nobody wants to see that. Okay, let's go to the other page. Ah, oh, man, where's the other pages gone? To the top. Am I missing something here? It should be page one, two, three, four, five. Ah, 
because that's in the buy now section. But look, you guys, you guys get the point, right? Um, essentially, you're looking for something that's under 100K, but even better, you're looking for something that's under 60K. Even better, something under 20K. If that entry point matches your, um, you know, your budget or how much Bitcoin you're willing to spend on this, go for it. These things are going to get more popular. They're going to get more valuable because history, the inscription number is going to go up. And um, that's essentially how, you know, it's like, it's like what I always say. You need to seek value into something before others do. Before the rest of the market catches up to it. If you can, that's the name of the game that we play. That's crypto. Like, you know, we can look at all these other projects that came to pass before, right? If you were onto that before the rest of the world in the space, you bank some coin. And ordinals is no fucking different. I'm telling you guys right now, you laugh at me now, laugh at the ordinal market now, but I'll be the one laughing to the bank later on, like I always do, all right? And I'm sharing some noise right now. I don't see the NFT pixel ones though, man. Okay, so this might be another good one. Ordinal Pizza OG, I think. 79,288 at 0.03, okay? Another one. So we're looking at, we're seeing a lot of a lot of these ordinals available around the 70K or sub 70K inscription mark. And I mean, that's okay and all, but they are better opportunities. All right, guys. So I hope that makes sense. I'll take some more questions right now if you guys got anything for me and we'll leave it at that. Okay. So, Sexy Dutchman, never heard of them before, for real. Oh, that was the bank. Yeah, we already said that. Okay, let's go down here. Under 10K. Okay. Sub 100 will be the hottest ones, uh, Thomas says as well. Under 10K. Well, I mean, you can find them under 10K like I did, but are you willing to spend about 0.2 BTC? I spent 0.18 Bitcoin for a 9,000K inscription um, or ordinal. Billy Z says, holy moly, BTC pumping. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, shit. Normally, I got it uh, the Bitcoin price up there instead of on air. What's that price at, boys? Let me see. I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to go like this. Actually, it doesn't matter. Whatever. Go watch it after live. No worries that. OFI something which... <laughs> Moby. No, bro. No, no, no. Okay, so that's... Uh, I know the one that you're talking about. That's a cryptocurrency. And um, it's a low market cap. It's highly volatile. I would not recommend you um, look into it. I mean, it might it might pump. It might pump. But, um, you know, th just tread water at your own um, risks, uh, so to speak. It's highly volatile. It's up. It's down. It's all over the place. I actually you know, spent like a day looking into them. Look, it might pump. But I just think it's a, it's a big gamble. That's all. It's not a sustainable one. Any cryptocurrency classes coming up? Classes like what? If you want me to sell your course or something, I don't do that shit. Um, but there's a lot of uh, schmucks online that do. <laughs> if you're not referring to that, I would say this. Um, definitely, guys, pay attention to the Stacks ecosystem, to the Stacks blockchain. Okay, Stacks, once again, is built on top of Bitcoin. They are building a smart contract for Bitcoin, which is crazy. They're just freaking crazy, right? Building a smart contract for Bitcoin. If they succeed, it's going to explode. Right now, to me, that's the altcoin of 2023. It's Stacks blockchain. Um, I think we're going to see some crazy gains throughout the year with Stacks and that entire ecosystem. Okay, I'm giving you guys some hints over here to, 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 to go seek out on your own. I'll be making some videos on that as well. Can you make your own and sell it? Of course you can, uh, CryptoBZ. I made a video on that, uh, Thomas, if you could drop that for him. I made a video on that and you could actually make it for a very nominal cost at a place called Gamma.io, which once again is built on top of Stacks. Think of Gamma.io like the open sea for Ethereum. Well, Gamma.io is the open sea for Stacks blockchain, but you could do a lot more there. You could actually inscribe, replace the word inscribe with the word mint. Okay, so you could actually mint and or, or create rather. Inscribe means to create. Okay, so you can actually create your own ordinals on Gamma.io for very nominal cost, like 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 what I just showed you right here. What do you think this is? <laughs> this is my tweet inscribed. I I I went to Gamma.io. I took a screenshot of this tweet what I said about USDC before it pegged, and I made my own ordinal out of it just for me to keep though, right? And it cost me probably like about I don't know, fifteen dollars, you know. So yeah, you could definitely do all of that. Oh, sorry, you didn't see. Right here. Right? This is in my Hyra wallet. I come here. I go down. There it is. This this uh, logo right here is like pretty much the Ordinal logo. 
All right, that's when you know you got an inscription. And when you click that, it opens up here and it goes to ordinals.com, which is the official Ordinals Explorer. If you guys wanted to check, that, you know, check out how it works. And there you go. Okay, cool. What else we got? Metapolitans, baby. Oh, don't, don't, you guys make me talk about everything in this live stream. We could definitely hit up some Metapolitans um, for sure. Uh, so, yes, uh, Harris, I hope that helped you out a lot. Uh, definitely look into the Stacks ecosystem. Definitely get involved in what Ordinals is. Ordinals is not just Bitcoin NFTs. A lot of people think, like, they, they get it, and they're a little bit turned off with NFTs. Dude, was I ever an NFT guy? Remember, I like, Metapolitans is what? It's a business license NFT. We're running a business in the metaverse. That's different to art. I mean, like, come on, let's be honest here. Like, you want to talk about art NFTs, guys? Like, there's not really much real true artists in the art NFT um, sector, okay? Bitcoin NFTs is not art. It's based off of historical artifacts and value based off of that, okay? I keep on saying that, but that's what it is. Like, it's not even me. Like, you guys could, you know, it's not even my opinion. What is the market saying? Well, let's take a look at the market, right? And when we come to, um, sorry, market, <laughs> ironically enough, and we search by number, well, number 70 is going for fucking 15 Bitcoin. Number 70 what? what? Okay, what is number 70? That is number 70 inscription number. It's going for freaking 15.45 Bitcoin. It's not my opinion, okay? Well, okay, well, let's look at another one. Well, number 112 is going for 6.95 Bitcoin, right? So why? Why is this dollar sign so valuable? Why? Because it's number 112, okay? And as these inscriptions get up higher and higher, and literally as I'm doing this live stream, people are inscribing, it's getting higher and higher, you're going to see this, these things be that much more expensive. Why? Because they value the earlier inscription numbers, guys. I can't stress that. So this is not like your Ethereum NFT world. This is a whole different world over here, right? And again, here we go. This guy's an idiot. I already told you why he's an idiot, promoting some blood blank bullshit. Um, look at this, 271. This is going for 2.9. Five. And, and you don't, if you don't think these sell, you're, you're in for another big surprise. Um, they, they've been selling. They've been selling. Go check the order of the orderswap.io bot on Twitter. So, yeah. All right, guys. Any other questions? What about BUSD? Yeah, so this is the thing about BUSD. I would say this. The thing about BUSD is... I don't like the fact that BUSD actually is, um, you know, the issue is Paxos, you know? So essentially, Paxos made an announcement saying that how they're not going to be, um, uh, you know, issuing any more BUSD because I believe there was a, they were approached by the New York Financial Committee, blah, 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 whatever it was, saying, hey, what are you guys doing? You know, there's a tackle for, for Binance, right? And unfortunately, Binance's issuer was in the States. I guess they have to be. And um, they pretty much say they're not going to be issuing it anymore. So I don't like any sort of um, entity that's in America that can be influenced by the powers that be that don't want to see this industry grow. So I like, look, I still think it's safe in terms of tradable, but to store value in BUSD, like your holdings and, you know, for a safety net, I would not go that route. Um, look, right now, guys, no stable coin is safe. Let's be honest, no stable coin is safe right now. Got to pick your poison. Even Tether, that what I'm in right now, isn't safe. Um, I think I'm going to go into some fucking Bitcoin. Somebody says it's pumping too. So I was, as I told you guys in my yesterday's live stream from the car, I was looking for an opportunity in terms of, okay, well, let me, you know, see what's the, how this unfolds. You know, the price of Bitcoin, is it going down, is it going up? Remember, they hold a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin on Coinbase. And, you know, one could only imagine they're waiting for the best time to really come and sell that off. You know, legally, I don't think they could sell it. But now the beautiful thing, once again, about blockchain is what, guys? It's on chain. So we know that's their wallet, the government's wallet. <laughs> we know it's their wallet, right? And there was some on-chain analytics, um, you know, firms that were, that were confirming that. So we know it's their wallet. So they're like, oh, shit, legally, they can't sell it. And some people will say, well, oh, they're going to do an auction. Well, that does not make any sense because before when they confiscated Bitcoin back in the day from Silk Road, an auction made all the sense in the world. Why? Because Bitcoin was not, it didn't have no rock solid um, 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 bottom or, or, or price of reflection, right? It wasn't reflecting any true price where the market is right now. We know right now what? Bitcoin's at, what, 20,000, four, 500, right? We know that's the price of Bitcoin. You can't say that how it's, it's, it's 5K. Back then, 
it was like up and down. Like, okay, what's Bitcoin? Okay, to the highest bidder. And they could have done that. Today, they can't auction. How are they going to auction Bitcoin? What, someone's going to pay fucking 30000 for a Bitcoin that's actually worth 20500 Just go to fucking, I don't know, Binance or something and get your Bitcoin for cheaper. So how could you auction it? You just can't. So what does that leave us with? They're going to have to fucking sell it off. Uh, you know, you think they're going to do an OTC trade <laughs> and sell it like that? No, they want to fuck the market up. So they're going to sell it on the market. So that's what I was looking at, okay? I hope my whole analogy there is wrong, and I hope I got it twisted, but I don't think I do. Um, Bitcoin's pumping right now. You know, maybe after that sell-off, it might dump again. But at the end of the day, man, right now at this point, you cannot go wrong with Bitcoin, okay? If you're in this, like Bitcoin, you should adopt as your main currency, period. That's what I'm going to do. Forget stablecoin. I'm going to fuck with stablecoin. As I said, man, it's far more easier for Bitcoin to recover from a price drop than a fucking stable coin to recover from a DePeg. So what, where do you rather keep your store of value? And when you, and when you actually put your funds into Bitcoin, what does that mean? And this is not financial advice. This is just what I'm going to be doing. What does that mean? You, you're helping secure the network as well. Okay? So everybody wins. Miners are going to win. Bitcoin is also going to pop off. They're going to get more fees. Uh, the network is going to be more secured. My funds is going to be more secured. We're going to get away from the traditional world. You know, everyone's going to wake up realizing that banks are fucking scams. They don't own as much as they say they own. If they, if they, if they did, then we won't see the likes of fucking, um, you know, SVB going down and fucking Silvergate and, you know, all these fucking banks, man. Right? That system is broken and the, um, you know, the game is over. The movie's done now. It's time to replace that with something else. And what are they going to replace that with? I don't know. Some say that how they're going to come with their own damn fucking stable coin. So... I know what mine is. I know what my fucking digital currency is, and that's BTC, man. You can't go wrong. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining the live stream. I hope you guys learned something from this live stream. You know, the news, look, I'm not a big on the news, as I say. You keep talking about negative shit, man. Okay, okay. Tap yourself on the back. Yeah, guys, hooray. It's not doing, it's not having no real impact in your damn fucking wallet or your, or your bank account or whatever you want to look at. It's, it's nothing positive about that. It's good to be informed, but... Moving forward, we're going to talk about how we can actually make some money. That's actually going to have an impact on your life, all right? Um, I feel like there's too much propaganda happening in this space. Again, we're turning into mainstream media. We should not, that's, we should never transition that way, right? We're leaving there. We don't want to turn every YouTube channel into like negative news station, bro. The constant negative news station like CNN. Screw that crap. We got to be positive and we got to know where the money's at and the next opportunity. The ordinals you show them, 61,268, the pizza slice, doesn't show listed to me. Um, you got to go to buy now, in the buy now section, and check it out. But it, but hardware, again, that, that was a brief, like, you know, I mean, I could spend another hour on that, but I'll do, I'll dedicate another video to uh, for that, in, in, in a live stream um, for that. Um, because, yeah, you know, that, that'll take up some time. But you get the, the gist of it, um, um, hardware. All you have to do is look for something under 100K. Even You could even find some gems that's under around the 55K mark. You could even find some gems in the freaking, you know, 15K mark that are selling for about 0 0.04 Bitcoin. And to me, that's freaking worth it, bro, right? Um, or even 0 0.01. They made a mistake or something. Spend some time, spend a good few hours tonight, look for him, and thank me the fuck later. So you know what? There ain't really much stuff to say other than till the next video. You're on your own. Later. Francis Dune Uncensored.